la 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 word power baby Section number 10. Let's get this started with, all right? Let's go. Section 10 is just origins of the occupational names from session 8 that we've already discussed. But now we're just going to talk about two more occupations. Writers and aging people. Like, writing and writers and aging and old. Let's get this started with people. Let's start off with the first one. Graphine. Graphine is Greek for... Write. It's a Greek root and means to write. Now, the thing about this is that you can just add them with a lot of things, uh, other roots, and to get all the words that we really discussed in session eight. One of them being, like, if you add them with logos, you get graphologist. If you add them with graphology, it also gives you graphology. Now, a graphologist is just a person who is really, really good at writing and also really good at analyzing writing, too. And graphology is just the occupation of the graphologist. And then we add chair. Chair is a hand, and it basically means chirographer. And, of course, the subject is chirography. And nowadays, chirography is a pretty lost start because of this. Hi, I am making a YT video right now. Please subscribe. Yeah. Pretty much that'll do. Yeah, but however, calligraphy has got itself a good new, a, a new, like, revival. I can go ahead and write calligraphy right now. Let me sign my name. Oh, wait, that's a little too sick. Reverse. Sean. See? Oh, this isn't much calligraphy. This is more of like, more of like, uh, it's cursive. But hey, it works. If it works, it works. I'll do it faster. Next up, after calligraphy, we have the person who does the calligraphy, calligrapher. And this is pretty also darn important too, because these people are the ones who write Chinese properly, who write like Latin-based languages properly. English is Latin-based language, also it is not the very first one. We have no idea which is the first Latin-based language. And now that writing and writers are all gone, let's go ahead and jump into the aging and the old. Oh yeah, I'm age. I'm old. I'm old. Yeah, there you go. Now, first of all, here I actually have two roots. They both mean old. It's just that they're from different languages. Now, Jeros is the Greek root for old age. And Senex is the Latin root for old. Yeah. The thing is... These two, these two roots, we can use them to create lots of words. Jeros, we technically use some nutrition and topology to go ahead and create geriatrician and and their practice, gerontology. And a geriatrician is the elderly person's doctor. If you're old and you need a doctor, you go to the geriatrician who studies gerontology, which is a good topology. Now, which is a good occupation. Yeah, that's a pretty good occupation too. Then we also have to talk about the Latin root, senex, and this means old in Latin. You can add this with aisle, which gives you senile, which basically means showing, like, showing signs of the physical and or mental deorientation, which actually shows the mark of the early stages of old age. Then you can also get senescent, which means you're growing old. You're very age, you're aging and you're growing old. You have senior, which means the older people, like, like grandpas, and they used to be a leader society because the, it was thought that the older you are, the wiser you are because you live longer and you had the most. Uh, most, most, most experiences. Meaning, you can treat your adult kid who's 40 years old as if they were still a 12 year old. Which is, to be honest, not that respectful. Eh. Then we have Senate, which is originally, which was originally a council of older people, and they were presumably the wiser citizens. Well, this is now being done because now not only the not not only seniors are here. In fact, Joe Biden may be a senior, and he may be the president. But Donald Trump is pretty much younger than him. So was Barack Obama, but he finished his term, so he can't go back to president. And that's it. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this episode. Hope to see you guys soon. Hope to see you guys soon. Until next time, shout out. And have a nice dinner. <laughs> oh my gosh, this one's heavier. This is pretty awesome. Where you have this gimbap and this gimbap. Let's go. Mm. Oh, okay. Want to know what's inside this really, really, really tasty gimbap? Here we go. You have 
the carrots, the spinach, the egg, the spam. No, not the spam that the World War II people eat. It's like ham. I call it spam. The label says spam, so. And it's like beef, bulgogi, as we call it in Korean. And it is darn tasty, especially the spam ham. We call it ham. They call it spam, though.